city council delays a vote that could impact local business promotions. And see what the city is doing to help home values in your community. Plus, it's time once again for the Boot Scoot and Boogie. That and more are coming up as we access Virginia Beach. Hello and welcome to VBTV's Access Virginia Beach, a program that informs you of news and events from around our city and schools. I'm Veronica Coleman. Thanks for joining us. They're bright, they're flashy, some citizens say they're downright gaudy. And in Virginia Beach, there are no rules for them. There are LED signs and they've been popping up across the city. And while City Council was considering a proposal to regulate the signs, public outcry caused them to rethink their decision. Members of the city garden clubs gathered at council to have their say recently. Their message to, to council members, ban LED signs. So the issue of the LED signs is a serious concern, not only to me, but to a lot of others who have worked so many years to keep Virginia Beach from looking like so many other resort cities. Council's original proposal called for limiting the lighted signs to just two colors. No moving images and messages that could change no more than every 30 seconds. Signs near neighborhoods would also have to be turned off after 10 p.m. Garden Club members call for an outright ban on the signs. In an effort to give everyone a chance to have their say, Council delayed the vote. A new committee was formed and tasked with coming up with a set of rules that will be more tolerable by citizens. It could take up to three months to approve a new set of regulations. In the meantime, Council is proposing temporary rules for posting of LED signs. One of the responsibilities of the Department of Housing and Neighborhood Preservation is to promote vibrant, well-maintained neighborhoods. Nowhere is that more on display than with the Department's Housing Rehabilitation Program. VBTV's Stephanie Sutton has the story. Home is where the heart is, but for some, keeping up that home is beyond their means. But thanks to the Department of Housing and Neighborhood Preservation, help is on the way. By helping homeowners for the past 30 years, the Department of Housing and Neighborhood Preservation has ensured a well-kept community atmosphere. It's a benefit to the community at large um, because it improves the neighborhood and also it encourages surrounding homeowners if they're able to maintain their own homes or you know to call us for assistance and if they qualify we can as assist with the repairs. Deteriorated homes that are in need of repairs are able to obtain up to $75,000 in home repair assistance through a no interest deferred loan. We're not a bank, we don't charge interest and they make no monthly payments. We will get the money back upon sale of the property or if they move out of the property. And for this home, renovations include every room in the house, even the exterior. On this particular home, we're doing the windows, uh, siding. Uh, we'll be doing some carpeting inside the house, uh, remodeling the bathrooms and kitchens, and uh, cabinets, uh, new flooring, and painting. This house is a pretty uh, large, pretty job. It's probably about $40,000 worth of work on this house. Homeowners who aren't able to afford those kind of improvements are able to keep an otherwise unmanageable home. I can't really afford uh, my uh, limited income, you know, to do a lot of things to my house to keep it, keep the upkeep, uh, basic maintenance, and uh, so it has afforded me to be able to do this on my own. The program also focuses on correcting housing code violations and increasing energy efficiency, creating a comfortable living environment for everyone. Reporting for VBTV, I'm Stephanie Sutton. The program is available to qualified homeowners. For more information, call the Department of Housing and Neighborhood Preservation at 385-5750. Last week, Mayor Sessoms recognized the city's accomplishments, challenges, and plans for the future during his annual State of the City Address. I stand before you today having completed my first year in office. And what a year it's been. His vision for the city's future included light rail, alternative energy sources, and regionalism, among a host of other things. And if you missed his presentation, you can catch it right here on Virginia Beach Television. Beginning March 28th, VBTV will air the address in its entirety. Dates and times are listed on your screen. You can also log on to vbgov.com slash vbtv for more information. 
Spring has sprung, and what better way to welcome warm weather than with a bike ride through the park. The city is updating its bikeways and trails plan, and it needs your input. The city will host three public meetings in April to get input on how to make the city accessible by bikeways and trails in a safe and organized way. Each meeting runs from 4 to 7 p.m. Contact Wayne Wilcox at 757-385-1104 for more information. And one success of the bikeways and trails plan is the completion of a connecting bridge for an oceanfront hiking and biking path. Access reporter Lindy Fay has the story. Pacific Avenue is one of the main routes for driving in the resort area, but if you're a pedestrian or you ride a bike, it's not always the easiest road to navigate. That's why the city is constructing the Pacific Avenue Trail. There's a good bit of vehicular traffic on Pacific Avenue going both north and south. This trail will keep residents and visitors off of the roadway and at the same time provide not only a safe link but a aesthetically pleasing one as well. The quarter mile elevated walkway stretches into Lake Holly and will carry bikers and pedestrians just feet above the water to give them easier access between Norfolk Avenue and 5th Street. We felt that having an elevated walkway, a pier type of structure over Lake Holly would be something that would not only be aesthetically pleasing uh, but would also make residents and our visitors feel even safer being that much further away from uh, this roadway. And though safety was a key factor in its construction, the wooden walkway plays a part in a larger plan to link bike and foot access within the city. The uh, eight mile loop takes you from the Virginia Aquarium on south and then west along Birdneck Road and then on, for, on further north to Norfolk Avenue where there's an existing trail east to Pacific Avenue and then this trail will take you from that easternmost point south to the Rudy Inlet Bridge here where you can either go east to the boardwalk or you can go on south to the Virginia Aquarium. And completion of that loop also connects several of the city's open and green spaces, filling one more goal in the city's comprehensive plan. For VBTV, I'm Lindy Fay. The project cost more than a million dollars to complete. Most of it was paid for with federal grants. And while we're on the topic of design improvements to the city, the city is looking to improve the design of its virtual presence as well. Here's Anya Linka with the story. The city's website, vbgov.com, will be undergoing some major changes in the near future. Advances are in the work to create a website that's easier to navigate and more user-friendly. The website will include more interactive outlets and access to new services, tools, and information about your local government. But the city needs your help to make this happen. If you have an idea that could improve the website, let us know. A survey will be available online through the end of April. Log on to vbgov.com slash surveys to have your say. Coming up next on VBTV's Access Virginia Beach, parents find help from a program for children who are mentally or physically delayed. And we'll tell you why these students don't let anyone push them around. That and more are coming up. Step behind the doors and gates of Virginia's most beautiful homes and gardens during historic Garden Week in Virginia. Discover creative ideas in interior and garden design in more than 30 tours statewide. Sponsored by the Garden Club of Virginia. Historic Garden Week, April 17th through 25th. Visit vagardenweek.org for more information. Treasures lie in the eyes of the passerby. Memorable moments, priceless pleasures. The vibe is peace. Watch the playful run. Escape from reality. Kids wave and smile at me. Dive in and laugh as we're kissed by the sun. No matter where you're from, it's good, it's pure, it's us, and it's fun. <laughs> Keep the good vibe. Virginia Beach. Welcome back to VBTV's Access Virginia Beach. I'm Veronica Coleman. Many parents will confess that raising a child isn't easy. Toss in a few challenges like physical or mental delay and you've got your hands full. But you needn't feel like you're alone in the fight to bring your child up to speed. In Virginia Beach, there is a program that can help. Learning to play, talk,
can even interact with others. Your child will probably change more in the first few years of his life than in any other time. But if he or she isn't meeting standard milestones, there could be a problem. And the Virginia Beach Early Intervention Program may be able to help. We provide services to infants and toddlers age birth up to three that may have been diagnosed as having some sort of a developmental delay, atypical behavior, or a condition that may result in a delay. The delay could be mental or physical. Either way, an assessment team works with parents to review the issue and determine the best form of support to provide. We develop an IFSP, or the Individualized Family Service Plan, and once that's developed, the, that is determining what supports the family needs to help their child. So for instance, if a child has a speech delay, we would have a developmental therapist or speech person go into the home and work with the family and the child. You're doing such a nice job. Let's see if we can get these hips right, knees right under your hips. The program also provides physical therapy and other developmental services during home visits. But it's not just about helping the child. We try to oh, teach and help the parent or the oh. caregiver to work with the child so that once we leave the home, the family would have a way of um, incorporating those goals and routines. It's important because our coming into the home once a week or once every other week for 45 minutes is not going to help the child. It's what the parents are doing on a daily basis during their regular routines that are going to make the most difference in the child's life. And for those who do follow through with regular therapy, success usually isn't far behind. Oh yeah, she's grabbing more toys now, she's more vocal, she's getting to be more mobile all things that she should be doing make me feel relieved <laughs> that we're hitting these milestones finally because that's what everyone wants for their child to do. So it's making me feel good that there's hope. As a child grows older, the infant program offers other therapy opportunities like this group session. They have a lot of fun, they have singing, they have finger plays, they have parachute fun, they, they go to a gym and which we're sitting in right now and they're able to um, play with um, different textures to help open their hands, for instance, if they're not able, able to open their hands and fingers. It's positive interaction for the children and the adults. It's really nice to talk with the other parents and see what they've gone through, and you kind of, everybody just tells their story, and it makes you feel better. It's almost like therapy for us. Therapy and a better outlook on the future for their child. But if we can get in and, and intervene early in a child's life, then we can resolve some issues that would otherwise carry through for the rest of their life. The infant program is part of the city's Department of Human Services. To learn more about services offered, log on to vbgov.com or call 385-0600. It goes without saying that many teachers go to great lengths to get their educational message across. And while creative lessons are one way to get students involved in learning, barriers sometimes hinder even the best of plans. But one group is working to make sure financial constraints aren't one of those barriers. Here's Access reporter Robert Patterson. This is tiny stuff. One at a time. No, they're like rocks in there. It may seem like a day at the park, but these students are digging deep into learning with the help of the Virginia Beach Education Foundation. The Education Foundation is a 501c3 nonprofit organization solely existing to support the Virginia Beach City Public Schools students and staff. The foundation began in 1992 as a way to support students in the technical and career education program. Its efforts enabled students to get practical experience by building a home from the ground up. The sale of the first home brought in enough profit to give a thousand dollar scholarship to each Virginia Beach High School. Many years and many houses later, the Education Foundation has grown to provide more than one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year to teachers and students. We have Building Futures grants up to a thousand dollars and school-wide grants up to five thousand dollars. Those are for those innovative projects that teachers really want to create for their students. Projects like the Shark Bites a transition program designed to help make the move from elementary to middle school easier for students. The kids who participated in the program were uh, getting better grades, getting in less trouble, were having an easier time socially transitioning to school uh, and dealing with all of the added responsibilities that they had. So um, to say uh, that it helped kids is almost uh, an understatement. Other projects take a more direct approach to learning. Probably I would say a seven. 
And it's programs like these that allow teachers to go beyond school walls and traditional lesson plans to offer inspiring learning opportunities. For teachers, this really enables them to do something that they've always dreamed of doing but don't have the materials with which to implement it. There are, uh, you know, quite a few schools in the district, many schools in the district, and for a district to be able to completely support the numerous activities that uh, they would like to hold and to house and provide for their communities uh, may be almost impossible. And these funds have allowed uh, us here at Parkway to be able to support the activities and the great parent support and involvement that we would like to have going on. The Education Foundation focuses on fundraising, house building projects, and an annual golf tournament to help pay for these creative learning opportunities. And in these tight economic times, it's just good sense. Reporting for VBTV, I'm Robert Patterson. Here's a quick look at how one Education Foundation grant helps students not only learn about current issues, but what they can do to become more eco-friendly. This is Think Tank, and uh, we basically have discussions about current issues and mostly um, environmental issues. We're working with the Linhaven Now project, and we bought rain barrels, and we're going to put them around the school to water our plant beds. Each project that we do in here lets us better understand how we view our environment and what we should do to help it, and it lets us know like what other people are doing in other countries and like in your own community. They take all the water off that would normally just be runoff. You position them underneath the rain spouts. You just like pour it out and it waters the plants and it like filters the water so it like filters out all the impurities so it's good for the plants. It's made me more aware of how much water I use every day so I try to take shorter showers and not use the water as much in the house. I think it's good that we can help our school in any and any hopefully, way possible. hopefully other schools will do it too. You can learn more about the Virginia Beach Schools Education Foundation by logging on to vbschools.com website. When we return to VBTV's Access Virginia Beach, if you've ever wanted to have a hand in the Virginia Aquarium, now's your chance. And spring break is just around the corner. See how your child can have the time of his life. We'll have that and more in just a bit. Virginia Beach Schools Parent Connection is your one-stop resource for information and events which support families and promote student success. On March 30th from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m., boys ages 8 to 12 are invited to attend the Guys Read Book Club at the Princess Anne Library. Come join the group for a book discussion, games, snacks, and lots of fun. Registration is required at 385-2610. Looking to become a more effective co-parent? Attend the Effective Co-Parenting Training on April 3rd from 8.30 to 12.30 at the Community Mediation Center in Norfolk. Learn to effectively communicate with your children and the other parent, discuss how children handle separation and divorce, and satisfy J and DR court requirements. Call 480-2777 for more information. To learn more about these activities or to see a complete calendar of April events, visit the Parent Connection page of vbschools.com. Welcome back to VBTV's Access Virginia Beach. I'm Veronica Coleman. Over the past year, attendance numbers at the Virginia Aquarium have soared, resulting in an increase of almost 50%. As you can imagine, it takes a lot of work to keep things running smoothly and the aquarium is only able to do that thanks to their staff and, of course, the help of their volunteers. To be precise, more than 900 volunteers help out each month and they're looking to add to the list. Whether you're only a youngster or pushing 90, the aquarium is always looking for dedicated helpers. From working behind the scenes to being hands-on with guests or marine mammals, the opportunities are endless. If this sounds like fun, then drop by the aquarium on April 1st for coffee and refreshments. Meet staff members and learn about volunteer opportunities that are available. The event begins at 1 p.m. and will be in the Bay and Ocean Pavilion Room. For more information, call the Volunteer Resources Office at 385-0274. Here's a reminder, spring break for Virginia Beach Schools is April 5th through the 9th. Schools will be closed for staff and students, and all administrative offices will be closed to the general public. 
And if you don't yet have plans for your child during spring break, why not consider a spring break camp? The Department of Parks and Recreations offers spring break camps at each of the city's six recreation centers. Camps run from 6 a.m. to 6.15 p.m. and cost just $125 for the week. Students will play games, do pool activities, and learn about some cool crafts. Spring break camps are open to kindergarten through fifth grade students. A valid membership or visitor's pass is required. Log on to bbgov.com slash parks for information and registration. On the corner of Dam Neck and Princess Anne Road sits a country market that offers local produce, unique shopping, and down-home cooking. But that's not all the farmer's market has to offer. The Virginia Beach Farmer's Market first opened their doors in April 1976. And now more than 30 years later, they continue to offer some of the best produce our agricultural community has to offer. But as the sun sets on Friday nights, the market has transformed into some good old boot scooting fun. <laughs> It's a good, clean fun. Nice place to go to. You got a place to dance. You have some good bands. It all come out here, and uh, you know we thoroughly enjoy it. Everybody enjoys it. Every Friday night from 7 to 10 p.m., you can tap your toes to country or bluegrass music, and of course, there's no shortage of dancing. The dancing is good. Square dancing, clogging, uh, twisting, line dancing. They have plenty of dancing. The hoedowns run from May through October and are free and open to the public. There's not many places that you can go for free and uh, not have to pay and actually you can bring your own dinner if you wanted or whatever and it's all age groups, you know, it's no alcohol allowed because we are part of the city and so it's just a, a nice friendly place to come. Both young and old can cut a rug at the weekly family event that has been held for over a quarter of a century. Got a lot of good memories. A lot of good memories here. And this is what it's all about. That's why the market is so important to the city of Virginia Beach, because people have a place to go on a beautiful summer evening. Family fun, lasting memories, and a history rich. In agriculture, the farmer's market has it all. Reporting for VBTV, I'm Lindy Fay. The hoedown season kicks off on Friday, April 2nd at 7 p.m. with the Back Porch Boogie Band. A different band plays each week. You can check out the schedule by logging on to bbgov.com slash farmers market. And don't forget to bring a lawn chair or a blanket. Bullying in schools continues to be a vicious cycle of harassment and revenge, but teachers at Brandon Middle school are hoping to stop that cycle. <laughs> this assembly is more than just funny. <laughs> lip service. These performers are helping kids take charge of their environment. Everyone who's around me will be treated with kindness and respect. Through a series of performances and sound effects, students learn how to deal with bullying. It is a big deal, and it's a big deal at the time, and it does affect education, it does affect their academic success, so it does matter that we step in. And if we can make a difference like this, then why not? 